Feed for farmed mink is produced with leftovers from abattoirs, fish plants and other food processing sectors. In turn, the farmed animals provide not only fur but also bone meal, fine oils for leather preservation and pharmaceuticals, and other valuable products. Nothing is wasted. It's uh, an environmentally friendly business and it's something we enjoy doing. Whether produced on farms or in the wild, most furs will pass through one of a dozen major auction facilities around the world. These auctions are now usually controlled by producers themselves, the trappers and the fur farmers. This assures producers a fair price for their products. North American Fur Auctions is the largest auction facility in North America and hosts the largest wild fur sales in the world. Thousands of furs are traded here every year as experienced buyers from around the world carefully evaluate the color and quality of each lot before placing their bids. This competitive bidding system determines fur prices. Which colors and textures will be in with top designers and consumers next season? How will market conditions, weather and fashion trends vary in different regions? These are just some of the questions the buyers must evaluate as they make their bids. It is not a game for the timid. Unlike machine-made textiles, once this season's supply is sold, there will be no more fur until next year. auction house, most furs make their way to tanneries or fur dressers like this one in Quebec City. Here furs are treated, softened and preserved before being transformed into coats, hats and leather goods. Tanning is one of mankind's oldest crafts, one of our first explorations into applied chemistry. The oldest way to soften pelts was to chew on them for hours, which was effective and probably nutritious, but very time consuming. Over the generations, modern tanning and fur dressing techniques have been greatly improved by research, providing many beautiful new ways of using fur. Research and new methods are also helping to protect our environment. In this plant, much of the oils and tanning liquids are recycled to reduce waste. The special hardwood sawdust used to drum surplus oils from the furs is a byproduct from fine furniture making, and the oil saturated sawdust is then recycled yet again to fuel the plant's heating system. There are several fur dressing facilities across Canada. The Nipissing First Nations Fur Dressing Company in North Bay specializes in wild fur. A lot of reserves have uh, problems with economic development, and, and uh, so I think that uh, this band having the opportunity to invest in such a big operation that could create uh, quite a bit of employment for uh, our community is, uh, is really fortunate for us. This is where my vision of a new fur coat is born, here on my sketching table. No two designers are alike. Each one of us has a unique way of working with fur. Well, I decided to be a designer because I enjoy art. I like to express myself in that way. And um, I chose fur because I love natural materials. I think it's a very um, sensual material. Nothing feels like fur. Nothing is as warm as fur. I mean, synthetics are, uh, there's they're synthetic fur, but there's no, there's no comparison. I try to do something a little bit more fun and accessible to, um, to everybody. <laughs> Zuki is a world-renowned designer whose remarkable artistry is bringing the furrier's craft to new heights. Years ago, everything used to be black, brown or white. So I took a fur 
and I create a fabric with design on it. Everything is done by hand. Every code is individual. Every one of them is different than the other. Some code might take a month, a month and a half. Some of the pieces are really work of art. To combine the colors, the silhouette, what type of fur you're going to do, it's very exciting. Paula Lishman is another designer who is breaking completely new ground in modern fur design. Believe it or not, this was a beaver. What we're doing is working with fur as fabric. We've got it in a yarn, we've got it in a different format. So we have the yarn and we have a cotton yarn, the marriage of the kind of the sensual aspect of the beaver with the cotton, which is, comes from the earth, takes its strength from the earth as a, as a plant fiber. This is how we make all our hats. They're handed in a tube, and some of the sweaters, a lot of the scarves and accessory pieces. It's the ultimate. It's the ultimate natural fiber. Designers like Zuki and Paula Lishman are showing that fur can be used in ways that traditional furriers could hardly have imagined. And that's just the beginning. In design schools around the world, including Collège Marie-Victorin or La Salle College in Montreal, and Ryerson Polytechnic in Toronto, students now have an opportunity to experiment with fur as part of their training to become professional designers. It's not your grandmother's old mink coat. garments are produced right here in the Montreal Fur District. Let's go see how a fur coat is made. Bonjour. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Ça va bien? Every coat starts out as a design on paper. From this design, the exact number of skins required to make a coat is calculated. The furrier spends a great deal of time ensuring that each pelt is a perfect match of color, hair length, texture and shine to each adjoining pelt. This alignment of skins is very important for the fit and hang of the garment. Once skins have been matched, they are trimmed to fit the pattern design. If a pelt has any imperfections, it will be fixed now. The letting out process allows each piece of pelt to be sewn to any desired length. Individual skins are cut in half and each half is then cut into narrow strips that will be sewn together in a longer and thinner shape that will still have the same color and pattern as the original shape. The skins are either cut by hand or by machine. Attention is paid to each knife cut to ensure a consistent and flowing appearance on the fur side. The cutter makes diagonal cuts in each pelt which will then be sewn into the new finished length. This will result in the appearance of a seamless strip which is now considerably longer and thinner. use a special sewing machine which holds the fur together between two metal discs. The needle runs through the skin and sews the actual thread on top of the skin without going through and sewing the fur on the other side. These pelt panels are then joined together to cover the pattern drawn out on a large sheet called a blocking board. At this stage the pieces are then wet and stapled down to exactly fit the pattern. As it dries on the blocking board, the new garment retains the memory of the exact shape the designer has envisioned. 